Okay, so you're reading the Bible and inevitably you run across a very scary notion of the unpardonable sin. Of course, as a new or unlearned Christian, as I once was, you think to yourself, oh no, I've committed the unpardonable sin, I can't be saved, ah! Is that you? Not to worry, you've come to the right place. Let's examine what exactly the unpardonable sin really is and why, no, you have not committed it. The unpardonable sin is mentioned by Jesus in three of the four Gospels, in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. All of the Gospels tell it slightly differently, but the gist is the same. Jesus is speaking to the Pharisees and says, Whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. This passage has left lots of Christians worried and confused, thinking that if they think or say anything bad about the Holy Ghost, they've now committed the unpardonable sin and can't be saved. A good example of this today takes place within the charismatic movement where many Christians profess to have the gift of tongues. If you were to tell one of these Christians that you don't believe they're actually speaking in tongues, they'll usually reply with something like, How dare you blaspheme the Holy Ghost? You just committed the unpardonable sin! Fortunately, just like their tongues, they're talking nonsense. Let's look in the Bible for a practical example of this. In Acts chapter 2 on the day of Pentecost, the apostles were all gathered in one place and with a mighty wind filling the room and cloven tongues appearing like as a fire, they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began speaking the wonderful works of God in different tongues. Real tongues. See, biblically speaking, tongues simply means different languages. The Apostle Paul confirms this in 1 Corinthians. So when the apostles in Jerusalem started speaking in tongues on the day of Pentecost, people from all over the nations who were also dwelling in Jerusalem at the time heard their own languages being spoken and gathered in amazement. Uh, behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our tongue wherein we were born? And they were all amazed, and they were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth they us? Others mocking said, These men are fooling you on! But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. You've all just committed the unpardonable sin and are going to hell. No, he didn't say that. He preached Jesus, and those same mockers ended up getting saved that very day. 3,000 of them. So if denying the real gift of tongues isn't blaspheming the Holy Ghost, then what exactly is the unpardonable sin? Well, let's go back to the Gospels and see the context of what exactly Jesus was saying. When we look at the events of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, we see a clear picture of what's going on. Jesus is roaming about the nation of Israel, healing wounds, casting out devils, and building a reputation for himself as a holy man of God. The Pharisees, the religious leaders of the time, became jealous of his fame and tried to defame Jesus by telling him things like, You're cashing out devils with devils! You're an agent of Beelzebub! <laughs> In short, they claimed that Jesus' power didn't come from God but from Satan himself. So how is that different from the first example? Because the unpardonable sin isn't just questioning or doubting or even slandering the Holy Ghost. It's accusing Jesus directly that his power is not of God, but the devil. See, when Jesus was on the earth in those days, he didn't just start his ministry by proclaiming he was the Son of God. That came later. All the people saw was a flesh and blood man, like you and me. That's why when Jesus says, Whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven. That's because as the Son of Man, he's just a flesh and blood human being. But as the Son of God... He's the Messiah. So, how can someone today commit the unpardonable sin? Well, that's easy. All you have to do is find Jesus in person and tell him face to face that he's of the devil. Uh, good luck with that. Don't forget, Jesus said, Whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. When Jesus said this world, he was speaking about the world he was physically a part of right then and there, where people could see him face to face. So when Jesus says, neither in the world to come, he's talking about when he's back on earth, reigning from Jerusalem in the millennial kingdom, where once again, people will see him face to face. At that time, they can once again commit the unpardonable sin. But that's a video for another time. Subscribe. Unless Jesus is physically on the earth, no one can commit the unpardonable sin. People today can commit and do all manner of horrible things, but if they come to Jesus with a repentant heart, they will be forgiven. But that doesn't mean people can't go to hell. Sadly, millions of people die and go to hell every year. That's because today you don't go to hell for anything you do. You go to hell for the one thing you don't do. And that's accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you haven't already yet accepted Jesus, it's not too late. Come to him with a repentant heart. Know that you can't get to heaven with your own righteousness. You need help from a perfect and pure God. Jesus says, For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened.